मदीना 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 Assalamu alaikum viewers my name is Afsha Khalid today our topic is going to be good character and we are going to see the good characteristics in a person in the light of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's examples and inshallah in this month of ramzan we are going to pray to allah subhanahu wa taala to give us the ability to give us the tawfeeq to follow the examples set by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the word khuluq the word khuluq itself means habits and habits are something that are not born over a day habit is something that we make over years and once it becomes a part of our nature that's where we are recognized from and i'm sure every one of us definitely wants to look good definitely wants to look beautiful every time we look at ourselves in the mirror we definitely think we are one of the beautiful people on earth but on the other hand we do realize that appearances is not always that matters what matches is the inside and khuluq the example set by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gives us the beauty of a character from inside this inside when it is well knitted is then that becomes a part of our personality allah loves beauty allah has set beauty in his universe but the beauty gets enhanced when people are dealing with good characters with good characteristics with one another first of all we will see surah al qalam ayat number 4 in which allah subhanahu wa taala says wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim Allah Taala says you O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are on an exalted that is standard of character and in another quoting in which we see that this is by Hazrat Abu Huraira radhiyallahu anhu he narrated that Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said indeed i was sent to complete the best of character what does this mean he was sent to complete the best of character it means that whatever good lies in a character is not going to go beyond what has been set by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself and when allah is bearing witness that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best that means none of us can can claim that i am the best i'll give you an example look at the trees what makes a tree beautiful look at a flower what makes it beautiful and then look at water what makes it beautiful a tree is beautiful while you see it during spring time when the green, when the leaves are lush and green a flower is beautiful by its fragrance not only just by its color water may look nice when it is stagnant but you will appreciate the beauty of a water when it is flowing when it is gushing so then what is beautiful about a human all humans may look different but what is the beauty that lies within a human that's his character and the better we have inside the better is presented outside now we will move on to another ayat from the quran that is from surah ali imran ayat number 159 in which allah subhanahu wa taala says and by the mercy of allah you dealt with them gently then De- dealt with who with the sahabas and the people around him and others and had you been severe and harsh hearted they would have broken away from about you who would have broken away from about him the sahabas come to think of it an engineer a poet an author all these people a doctor everybody is recognized by the work they have performed you don't just remember names in history for the sake of names you remember them in history because what they did what their work was so why is allah taala saying that they would have left you 
because the product we see which was set forward by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the Sahaba. So for us, the second road model after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu are our Sahabas. And Allah Ta'ala says here in Surah Al-Imran that had you been harsh, had you been hard to deal with, had you been not, not soft enough for people to come to you, to come up to you, you would have seen they would have left you. And this is so naturally true. Look at ourselves even in our own families. Sometimes the children are very comfortable going up to the mother, but they are not comfortable going up to the father. There definitely has to be a reason. In friends, you will see some children are more closer to a certain friend rather than all of them. Look at the teachers. Some children can go up and even just tell the teacher they didn't do their homework. No problem. But some teachers, children are really scared to go up to them. What makes us think is the difference? Why can we relate to some people and why can't we relate to some? What's the reason? This is what Allah is telling us here to Nabi says, so had you been harsh, had you been severe, had you been dealing them with harshness, they wouldn't have come close to you. So this means the first characteristic of a good character is when you are soft. People can turn up to you. For the month of Ramadan, I can make a request to all of our viewers that make a little small diary, just make a small diary and keep writing moments that you have experienced with others when they were not good to you. And then see your reaction. How did you deal with them? Did you do a tit for tat? Were you worse than them? Or were you good to them? Just write it down. And inshallah, by the end of Ramadan, if we are working, if we are working on our taskia, if we are working that I need to improve myself, inshallah these points are going to help us. We move on to our next hadith in which we see, this is according to Hazrat Anas bin Malik and he narrated radiallahu anhu that Nabi sallam was the best in character amongst the people. He was the best in character. Now, to prove why he was the best in character, I will bring the example of Zaid bin Haris. And I'm sure all our viewers must be acquainted by the name Zaid bin Haris. He was the uh, slave gifted by Hazrat Khatija radiallahu anha at her marriage with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And mine, just, to, just for your sake of information, Hazrat Zaid had lost his mother while they were in a mela, while they were in a bazaar, when people came and they looted and they looted and amongst the loot they picked up Hazrat Zaid also and he was all just about like 10 years old and then when he was bought by one of the uh, cousins of Hazrat Khatija and then finally he ends up with Hazrat Khatija and, and, and later she gifted him to Absa Salam he lived with Nabi Sassam for 5 years now he's 15 years old and we see that his uncles and his father they come to collect him they come to take him and Nabi Sallam, in return, puts up the offer to Hazrat Zaid bin Haris that you are so welcome to leave with your, with your father and your uncles. I will never stop you. And he said, I cannot leave you and go with anybody anywhere. For the times that I've spent with you, I feel that no one else can give me what I have taken from you. The way you have dealt with me, I don't think anybody can deal like that with me. So this is one example in the practical life of Nabi Sallallahu These are not just our hadith for us to read and then assume, uh, oh, where did we see this happening? No. We read the hadith to see practically being done by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu also. Then we move on to our next hadith and that is a Again by Hazrat Abu Huraira. And let me inform you that Hazrat Abu Huraira, his real name was Abdul Rahman. This name was kept by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself. And the most references in the Sahih Hadith that you will get to read will be by Hazrat Abu Huraira because he never left him. Only when we used to go to visit his family, that's the time when Hazrat Abu Huraira used to leave him. So the most number of Ahadith, Sahih Ahadith have been reported by Hazrat Abu Huraira. So he narrates, radiallahu anhu, that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, 
द मोस्ट कम्प्लीट ऑफ बिलीवर्स इन ईमान आर दोज हु आर बेस्ट इन कैरेक्टर वॉट डज दिस मीन दैट दोज हु बिलीव सो टू टू बिलीव एंड टू कम्प्लीट द ईमान वन नीड्स टू बी गुड इन द कैरेक्टर वॉट इज ईमान दैट्स द ओनली मीन्स ऑफ सेल्वेशन इन आखिरा we may be able to live our lives in dunya but rest assured that iman will be only the basis of salvation in akhira so if iman is the salvation in akhira the best of iman is when a good character prevails in a person and if that means on the other hand if somebody is not possessing a good character does this mean that his iman is complete no his iman is not complete that means he needs to work a little more harder to complete the iman to be accepted then we have another hadith and this hadith is by abu dahda radiyallahu anhu and according to this hadith he narrates that i heard allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam say nothing will be placed in the balance heavier than good conduct and a person with good conduct will attain the rank of one who fasts and prays what does this mean whoever is good in good conduct his his balance is going to be the heaviest on the day of resurrection on the day of judgment and what does that mean heavier that means our deeds are actually going to be given a weightage as per the weightage that is used on scales today when we go buying fruits and vegetables that means our actions are going to be actually given a weightage and this weightage will depend upon the deeds as done with good intentions that is a reward expected from allah subhanahu wa taala there was no other uh, reasons to do that and secondly they were done in accordance with the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way he has guided us so it says that the heaviest on scale will be the one with the good conduct and then it will reach it is equivalent to someone who was fasting during the day and who was praying during the night of course it does not really mean that you need not to say your prayer and you don't need to fast if you are observing a good conduct no it doesn't mean that it means fasting and prayers are pillars of islam you are following the pillars of islam equivalent to this ibadat is a good conduct you reach the levels of ibadat that means good conduct in other words is ibadat that allah may rest assured give a person the level of ibadat like he was praying all night tahajjud nawafil and he was fasting during the day so that means one should never consider a good conduct as something which is not required i mean i i can be mean i don't i can use an abusive language i can use a foul language i can uh negate anybody when and where i want to i can be arrogant i have my ego sometimes you must have heard people saying well i have my own principles and i don't change my principles well you may be not changing principles for yourself but to live but to live in an environment where people are going to be comfortable with you you might have to bend a little bit here and there so that people are comfortable with you and for us what should be the aim that allah should accept us and that the people around us accept us not that i am just expected within myself not caring how others talk about me and they think about me i mean i mean if you're going to ask me i may say i i'm very good i don't see anything wrong in me but go and ask my husband go ask your father go ask your mother ask your friends ask your colleagues what do they say about you because none of us would definitely want to hear that he is not a good human everybody wants to hear he is a good person 
but the real opinion lies with the people. So here it is said that he will reach the level of ibadat as per performing psalm during the day and saying prayers at night. We move on to our next hadith and this hadith is also narrated by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu and he narrates that Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said two characteristics are not found together in a hypocrite pleasant personality and understanding of deen meaning two things you may not find in who in a hypocrite who is a hypocrite in simple words hypocrite is someone who is two faced he is not what he claims he may be saying something by his tongue but he never believes in it by his heart so hypocrite two major characteristic he is not going to have a pleasant personality why because if we will see with another reference of a hadith and the gist of the hadith is that a hypocrite a sign of a hypocrite is, is that whenever he gets into a quarrel with someone he tends to be abusive he uses foul language his body language is impolite and i think these days we get to see this very often uh, with our youth in the colleagues you can see that on the roads you see that in the shops in the marketplaces people are intolerant and not to the extent of being politely intolerant we are intolerant to the extent that we may get abusive and taking a next step ahead now to we have weapons you don't like it we kill you right so here two things are categorically said about a hypocrite that he will not have a pleasant personality now how pleasing is that to hear that i think i'm well dressed i think i can speak very well i can i have a very good social circle but the moment i have to deal with others i become abusive and especially with the with the with our underprivileged friends and and brothers and sisters and secondly it says that they do not have an understanding of the deen he may be highly qualified he may be highly stationed he may be of a high status he may be one of the elite x y z whatever but when you talk about religion with him he knows nothing allah will not give him an understanding of the religion so two things do not fall in the characteristics of a hypocrite may allah save us from these two characteristics and may allah give us the understanding of the deen and ramzan is one of the blessed months to get an understanding of the deen for all of our viewers maybe if we were not able to do it during the rest of the year this is the month to pick up the quran this is the month to pick up the ahadith to try to understand what allah wants us to to be like and come to think of it we may have made a lot of plans for dunya I may see myself 10 to 15 years from now where I want to be myself where do I want to see my children where do I want to see my husband but come to think of it we need to even plan where do I want to see myself once I die where am I going to end so the road to jannah is very beautiful but it is loaded loaded with thorns in dunya it's beautiful beautiful to the extent that jannah itself is beautiful the people who are going to abide by in jannah are going to be beautiful their inside and their outside is going to be beautiful nothing but beautiful so if i aim to be amongst them i need to work about my inside i need to work on my inside and my outside to make it pleasing to others and to make it pleasing to allah subhanahu wa taala Then we move on to our next hadith and this is according to Hazrat Abu Zar radiyallahu anhu and he narrated Allah's messenger said to me fear Allah 
wherever you are fear allah wherever you are you are in the public you are alone because a lot of times at times you even pick up we just get up to say namaz just because we are amongst people where everybody is saying namaz but had i been home alone i wouldn't have got up for the prayers so he says nabi sasam said fear allah wherever you are you are in the air you are under the sea you are on the earth wherever you are just fear him why because good conduct depends upon how much you fear allah whether you are dealing with humans whether you are dealing with animals wherever and second thing nabi sasam said was and follow a bad deed with a good deed follow a bad deed with a good deed what does that mean we are humans we tend to make mistakes we are going to commit sins none of us can claim that i've never committed a sin none of us can claim i never made a mistake and by the way one of us does claim that i've never made a mistake i'm always right mind you that's a sign of arrogance and we need to work on that we need to lower our ego and arrogance if we say that i don't make mistakes so everybody makes mistakes the solution to making mistakes is replace it by a good deed no problem and this is the beauty of islam this is the beauty that allah has placed in our religion that no problem i give you the solution you made a mistake no problem cover it up with a good deed all we need to do is just bring back a good thing there is no disparity in islam you can't sit and think oh well i made a mistake i don't know how to correct it what if allah doesn't accept it let it be or we start covering our mistakes we start to think that mistakes are fine it's okay everybody makes mistakes so you don't need to worry just just keep on doing it it's okay no it's not okay allah says in this hadith according to nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says no what you need to do is you need to replace it take an example what do i do normally what do you, what would you do had you slipped on a peel of a banana what would you do once you've slipped you've fallen on the ground are you not going to get up you are going to get up so if you're going to get up that's the same thing that if you've made a mistake just cover it with a with a good deed and the third thing he said was and why he said do it with a good deed he said it's going to wipe it out wal hasanatu yuzhibna sayyiat the good deeds take away the bad deeds and again inshallah this is the month of ramadan and may we pray to allah to give us the tawfeeq to think about our mistakes and to think about the wrong things we've been doing and may he give us the tawfeeq to replace them by good deeds in this month and inshallah after ramzan also throughout the year so and the third thing was to behave with people with good conduct what is behavior and behavior in is something that tells me how i deal with people around me because if my behavior when i have to deal with others whether it's my siblings my parents my friends my colleagues if it if my behavior is not appropriate chances are that the people around me are going to disperse they are going to leave me and here we see that we need to be dealing and then dealing with a good conduct for example just think about yourself you've been in a moment where where somebody was not nice to you or somebody said something to you which was not which was not very nice to you and you didn't like it we all have been given choices we all have been given choices we can deal the way we want to deal no problem 
But if I want to believe that my good, good conduct now is going to pay me back, I'm not expecting anything from the human. I'm expecting something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this fear lies within me, I will take a pause. I will take a pause. I will think twice. Do I need to retaliate right now? Do I need to act in a negative way? Am I going to make things worse? Because it's always two-sided. You can't say things happen one-sided. So I need to realize that when I have been given an option, I need to decide how to deal with this matter right now. So think about it. If I've done something wrong, you've done something wrong. Ask yourself, ask yourself. I did this wrong. This thing is wrong. What do I need to, what did I need to do to correct it? Sometimes we tend to go and ask others and we go to our friends and maybe siblings and parents and they want to console and they say, well, okay, you did it because the others told you to do it. You didn't do it. You would have never done it. You did it because she said you to do it. You did it because X, Y, Z said you to do it. So no problem. It's okay. It's okay. No, don't take opinion from others. Ask your conscious. Ask your conscious. Did I do it correct? No, I didn't do it correct. If your conscious says, no, you did not do it correct, believe it. And then accept it. And then repent. The simple thing in this hadith, it is being said, follow a bad deed with a good deed. It is going to wipe it out. You don't need to take opinions from anybody. Your conscious is the best advisor. For as long as the conscious is alive. That's a sign of Iman. If my conscience is alive, because Allah has kept this fitrat in all of us, all of us, whether believers or non-believers, this fitrat is always there. It is going to reply you positively for good. It is going to reply you negatively for bad. Simple. Any sin is committed? No problem. Go back. Say Toba. Move on. Normally, why we don't go into good character. Why do we think that we can get away with any sort of character we possess? Is because sometimes we are too full of ourselves also. We are too full of ourselves thinking that nobody can harm me. Nobody can harm me. In the case of a family, Sometimes even parents tend to think because the children cannot do anything in return, I can beat them up whenever I want to, whenever I want to. I can abuse them, I can beat them up, whether there are valid reasons or not. But no, love, affection comes with good conduct and this good conduct is the bond of human communication of human conduct and in this we will realize that for people who have been practicing it have come up with the examples set by them and you don't need to go far pick up the seerah of the sahaba pick up the seerah of the azwaj e mutahharat and the sahabiya then inshallah allah will guide us to the road of a good character, to the road of Sirat al Mustaqim. And with this, viewers, inshallah, we will meet you tomorrow. We are going to end our program here today. And I wish you all a very pleasant Ramzan. And may Allah accept all our ibadats and may Allah accept all our muamalat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu